my name is Ethan Willard with Went Corporation, and I'm here with Andrew Gallo from DMS Metals. We're at his scrap yard just outside of Toronto, Canada. We're taking on a little tour today. So this is a family owned and operated facility. We've been here since 1974. Uh, in 1974, this was, uh, this facility here was basically a bankrupt auto recycler. And so when my dad took it over, uh, he was, he acquired a piece of property, a building, a cable crane, and the name, John Neal Steel and Metal. And uh, chipped away at it for 40 plus years and uh, built up a, you know, a pretty good successful business. And here we are. So you ap operated as a scrapyard for many years and mm -hmm. then just last year you installed the shredder, correct? That's right. So we've been operating as a, a scrapyard the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, prior to the shredder, we were doing pretty much the same things that we're doing now, just without a shredder. And what made you make the transition from being a, a scrap dealer right to going to a shredder? Prior to the shredder, we were you know, still dealing with the general public. We were still servicing industrial accounts. We were going direct to foundry and mills and other consumers with all of our, our products. Um, we were brokering other dealers scrap. The only thing, the only items that we weren't going direct to a consumer with were, were shreddable items. And we had to rely on another other shredders in the area. So that was the one area of improvement that we could have made and, and we saw the opportunity. And so we uh, we did it. Why don't we take a take a walk? Yeah, sure. Yard? Let's go. We got our industrial side and we got our smaller scale for the for the peddlers. Okay. Um, if if we if they have car related items, they're going to go to the right when they get off the scale. And we have three deep pollution systems there. Um, and that's where our cars are, you know, be polluted and drained and, and whatnot. If they have non-ferrous items, they go down the scale to the left. Uh, we have our non-ferrous warehouse over there where we receive the material. We have scales. We have some non-ferrous processing equipment. And then, uh, you know, we process in that warehouse and we also store material. Um, you know, bo both warehouses are essentially non-ferrous. Basically everything else that isn't one of the two things I mentioned goes to the back. Okay. And that's where we have our uh, heavier duty processing equipment. So we have, um, you know, all of our material handlers, we have a baler and then a shear baler and a mobile shear. And then we, of course, the shredder and the non-ferrous downstream equipment. So as, as we walk back here, you can see there's, there's massive piles of various types of scrap. Um, is this all going into the shredder? Or are you separating some out and going elsewhere? Half of what comes in, go, goes into the shredder. Um, and then the rest of the material is either ready ready to ship or will be sheared, baled, torched, uh, whatever whatever we need to do to get it to the point where it's mill or foundry ready. So when did you install the shredder here? Well, we started the process in 2019. We were operational about a year ago in March of 2020. So what differentiates you from the others uh, that allows you to have such a successful business? The size of this shredder and the, and the versatility um, allows us to to do a you know different things, uh, make different products. And typically, a shredder will shred cars, uh, shred light sheet um, yeah. items like that. And when you do that, you're going to make a ferrous shred product, and then you're going to make ancillary non-ferrous products, Zorba wire, stainless. But in addition to that, we make we generate probably five, four or five different specialty items, other products that we make. Okay. And a lot of times we do that, we might run, we might make three different products in one ship, which is is unique. Mm -hmm. and, and it's important to note that if you're running Ferris, let's say you're making, you're running a steel based product mm -hmm. and you want to switch over and, and shred aluminum, you can't have any cross contamination. Right. So your stalls have to be clean, your belts have to be free of any, any other materials. And, you know, the fact that we can do that and do that efficiently and, and cost effectively is is a huge, um, it gives us a leg up. It, it's definitely easier for us to do that. You decided to put in a Went 6090. What is it that made you uh, go with Went over some of the others on the market? We decided that we wanted something in this size range, so 2,500 horsepower motor. We didn't know that we wanted a modular shredder at the time, mm -hmm. but when we discovered that it existed, we thought, you know what, this would be great. So obviously, Went is the pioneer in the in this space, in the modular right. shredder. What puts you over over the top in terms of why we went to a Went? The depth in your team, the engineering, 
department, the, the support team, the, the technical uh, staff, the sales team, just, just everyone there was, was very knowledgeable and accommodating. And then um, the depth of your customer base. But one of the nice benefits of, of that customer base is that we, we made some good relationships mm -hmm. with other 6090 operators. And it's really a great network. Um, and uh, you know we're, we're happy with the decision to go yeah, with Lance. It's almost like you created a community of, of other right. 6090. Okay, we're gonna go in the yard? Yeah, let's do Put it. Put our hats on. This is where our, you know, tread, shredder stock, uh, light sheet material, dealer clips, that, you know, whatnot is, is going here. And then we have some plate product rims. Um, obviously it's a different product. Right. Uh, we don't mix them together. Uh, that will be here. And we use this middle stall here as a transitional stall. We have, uh, right now we have some cars in here. Um, just because we got, we've been overwhelmed with parts right now. So, um, but we also use this to uh, isolate loads, quarantine. Um, if we're running, if we're tolling for somebody or, or whatever, it's a nice kind of transitional stall where we can separate okay. items. So um, this, this we use for various products. We use that, that's our normal car stall. Mm -hmm. And we, and we do that to separate it from the shred. Okay. So even these cars here, are separated from the shred pile because of the nature of what we're doing. But if we can isolate it, it helps in case of an emergency. Right. And then we have an aluminum bay over here. Uh, you know, we, we, we shred a few different types of aluminum. Well, why, don't, why don't we kind of walk through the shredder first? So I see you have your end feed conveyor coming down into your 6090 shredder. So let's maybe kind of walk through this way sure. and, and see what you got going on. I see you have, uh, it looks like a container for the, the electrical controls. The motor has its own building. And so this is really what the modular package is all about, right? Exactly. For those people who don't know, when I said modular shredder, when we talk about a modular shredder, this is it. I mean, you, you have your controls containerized. They came to site, ready to go. You guys hooked everything up. We bring it here. There's still electrical you know, work required but you're pretty much, it's plug and play. Um, your motor house is the same thing. It came in a container. Our hydraulics came in a container. Uh, the, the control pulpit came, so it all comes together like, I guess like Lego and, yeah. and they, they put it together. So, so, the, so then the big savings for you then is on infrastructure, correct? That's right. The I savings mean, I mean, of the building and the concrete. So it's a lot, it's a lot easier to install. It's a lot quicker to install, which means it's a lot cheaper to install. Um, from a permitting perspective, you can't, you're not going to get away from your regulatory requirements, obviously environmental, whatnot, noise. Um, but, but you, from a building perspective, obviously every region is different, but it certainly changes the building permitting or the per permitting aspect or permit requirements. So it definitely helps. Um, just to make an easier installation. And the nice thing is, is that, you know, if uh, everything's isolated, right? So if you need to get to a certain spot, and I mean, technically we can even move some of these buildings if we, if we really wanted to. So it's just a nice, uh, it's a nice feature. Our shredder operator's up in the pulpit and we have our crane operator. Then we have our pickers okay. that are, you know, part of the, uh, of the Ferris side. And then we have a forklift loader operator that is operating the non-Ferris, but he's also adding support on, onto the, the Ferris side. So everyone is in constant communication with one another. They're all mic'd up, but the, uh, the, the shredder operator and the crane operator are, are constantly communicating. All right, so we're at the non-Ferris non plant. Why don't you walk me through a little bit what you have for equipment and what the process is. So we have our vibratory batch feeder. That's where the material comes in. So first of all, we get it off, it comes off the shredder, we get our ASR, we stockpile it. We never run it right away. Uh, we let it dry out a little bit, liberate a little better, uh, it makes for better recoveries. And then we scoop it, we load it into the batch feeder, it goes up this conveyor to the Vivitech. We size the material four ways. We have a fine absorb a product that we make through our eddy current system. Right now we have two eddy current systems. The mid and the large uh, 
sizes meet up at the eddy current, our mid-large eddy current, we make another Zorba product there. And then anything, uh, I believe it's three and a half, four inches and over, is considered over. It goes to this first pick house over here, and we have a picker hand picking uh, various metals there. And then um, on the Zorba side, we have another pick house where we're picking our Zorba. So we're making two Zorbas, two Zorba products, and then you know we have uh, we're picking steel, we're picking stainless, we're picking wire, two different types of wire, we're picking. Uh, larger aluminum, irony aluminum, circuit board, brass, I mean, copper, uh, probably seven or eight different products are coming out of here. And then everything is, uh, from a marketing perspective, we we're, we sell it locally, we export, uh, we, we try to you know keep our doors open, our options open, and just look for the best value. And now, just, just like the Ferris downstream, you've designed this plant to grow as well. We went with uh the basics and and now fortunately we're in a position where you know we're we're going to be as you know we're going to be expanding uh, the system in the near future so and so you go from a vibratory screen here up into this building and then inside this building are your two eddy currents that's making right your zorba. yeah so we're adding uh some finders um we're adding another eddy current uh to get more aluminum or, or better aluminum recoveries so we're really, really looking forward to adding on to this this line Here's an example of one of our Zorba products. Um, you know, we, we sell, sell it domestically. We sell it overseas. Um, we export, right? Um, same with all of our non-ferrous items. We, we, you know, we try to, obviously the closer, the better, um, but export market's been strong and, and uh, you know, or can be strong. So we always look for the best opportunity and, and uh, best value. Yeah, quality has been good uh and and efficiency has been good but there's always room for improvement and that's kind of what we're trying to do now we've 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 uh we've learned the technique and now it's about mastering the technique and getting better right all right and you, you you've invested in the equipment you need to, to produce your ferrous shred you're producing a real nice zorba product and then hopefully shortly here you'll be producing both insulated copper wire and zurich as well that's right yeah that's the plan all right, so we've kind of come full circle around the shredder now. That's right. uh, we've had a good look at the, the shredder and the downstream of the non-ferrous plant. You know, I noticed, I noticed throughout the plant, it seems to be uh, simplicity was kind of one of your, your main focuses. You know, we look at the downstream and it's just a, a dual mag stand with a picking platform. There's not a lot of uh, the bells and whistles that, you know, are at least available. What made you go that route uh, versus, versus the other? We've always been a kind of, you know, buy what you need type of company. So, um, you know, but what's important is that, again, with your guidance, we, we were able to design the system in a way that we could adapt. If we felt like we, you know, had a change of heart or, or requirements at the mill changed or whatnot, and we needed to add some further separation or, or whatnot, we could do it. We left room, we added conveyors and, and, and whatnot. So, um, that's the that's the theme that we try you know is uh, versatility and adaptability is, is what we're trying to achieve and I think that's what we've done with the shredder. Yeah, I mean the, the place looks great. For for the the people who might be watching this video and, and looking at shredders, what what's the maintenance routine that you kind of see on these shredders? Because obviously with a, with a hammer mill, you're you're shredding steel with with more steel, so there's there is maintenance associated with the machine. What do you guys see uh, from a maintenance standpoint? From the so the general principle, general rule of thumb is for every hour that you shred, you spend about half the time, half an hour on preventative maintenance uh, and some repairs. We, uh, we are a little more efficient than that. I think we're probably 30, 40%. Um, so if we're shredding seven, eight hours, it might be three hours of, of preventative maintenance cleanup. Um, most of the maintenance is preventative. Unfortunately, you do have uh, the odd time where you have to make a repair. Um, and again, most of the maintenance is done during shutdown right. in between shifts, but occasionally uh, something comes up and uh, during you know production and you might have to stop and, and make a quick adjustment or repair. So from a, from a preventative maintenance standpoint, you're, you're what, greasing bearings, changing hammers, um, things like that? That's right. And how, how often do you change hammers? We find obviously the, the, the fresher the hammers, the better quality. So, um, you know, we, we, we do uh, a flip, flip, switch, switch rotation. 
we're doing something with the hammers every three or four shifts. So it's really a full team effort. And um, yeah, our guys have, have picked up, you know, the hammer switches and the other to belt. You know, we had some good advice from our, our WEN sales rep. Uh, prior to shredding, we had backup belts for every single size. Um, and it seemed like overkill at the time, but it, it, it was a great, piece of advice um, because you do go through quite a few belts right. in a shredder. And having good good people, good operators to run your shredder is absolutely critical to, to making sure it's the most efficient and, and uh, the best products and, and best throughput for sure. We, we were told from the beginning that one of the, the biggest challenges of operating the shredder would be staffing the shredder, right? So you know, we're, we've been very lucky. We have a great group of, of pickers. We have a great shredder operator. Uh, the, the crane support around the shredder is great. Our non-ferrous guys are great. Yeah, no, we're, we've been very lucky in that respect. So obviously, you know, your staff here at DMS is, is absolutely critical, but also having the manufacturer's uh, staff uh, yeah. able to support you on a regular basis is, is also critical to keep the machines up and running. What That's, kind of support do you see from, from when? Well, so there's two types, right? There's there's the um, the support that we get, the kind of informal like advice, uh, you know, uh, shoulder to lean on type of support where we have we want to try something and uh, we may call the the other shredder operators too but you know we might reach out to our, our local sales rep then you have more of a tech support call um, Wentz tech support is very good we've, we've called them at five o'clock in the morning and we've had you know support uh, we call them after hours we've had support um, with today's technology and the way that you guys, the controls are set up and everything, the way you guys have designed the machine, um, it's really easy. They can remote access our machine remotely. Right. A lot of the times that that's, it's as easy as that. It's a quick fix. Um, we've had situations where, I mean, our proximity to Buffalo helps, uh, we're close, right? Um, so, but we've had situations where we had a, you know, we had an issue in the morning, we had a tech support, uh, a WENT staffer here um, or somebody from the WEN team here on site, uh, you know, a few hours later. So, you know, we get great support from WEN. Yeah, I mean, uh, support something we always, you know, strive for with, within our company, and it's, it's good to hear that, you know, you're getting the support that you need. How has your business changed uh, from, from, you know, a year ago to what you what you see today? From an employee perspective, we've, we've added, you know, many people to our workforce. Um, volumes have, have gone up, you know, certainly. Um, we're buying, we're buying a lot of the same items that we bought before, but you know the way we buy it is a little different. We can be a lot more aggressive with certain certain grades. A lot of scrap, you know, companies that we may have viewed as as competitors before the venture are now customers. A lot of that stemmed from the fact that we had a shredder and we were able to buy their shred and, and open up that door. But you also now you know if you're buying cars let's say you go to an auto wrecker and they have other items that you may not necessarily shred mm. but they are looking to also sell so um it's opened up a lot of doors in that respect too it's, it's great yeah i know one of the one of the first things we always do on the sales side when we're, we're talking to new new customers about shredders is, is we look at uh the return on investment um, or the business case around the shredder. And one of the things for us that's always the most difficult to capture is those doors that you just talked about that get open um, that you never even thought about having opened before. The customers that come to you that you never even dealt with before. Those are the, the kind of areas that's really difficult for us to capture in a spreadsheet, you know, or in, in the math when you're looking at ROI. How's the ROI been for, for you on, on this plant? Can't tell you all my secrets, <laughs> but I mean, we, we typically as a company we we try to if we're looking at you know a purchase like this we're looking for a three-year return on investment right mm -hmm. uh, three-year payback maybe four maybe five under special circumstances depending on the size of the investment um so i'll just say that you know we're, we're in good shape to uh to meet that that goal mm -hmm.